So we have set up our network state area and our compute state area. The last thing we have here is data. And just for fun, we're going to see how to set up an RDS database here, which is something we'll put into our data state. So let's go ahead and just copy and paste our Cloudcast file here, just like we did in other videos. We'll name it main. We'll get rid of the extra stuff here. And we can get rid of everything under here because we are going to create a new module here. So we'll do module database. And the module we're going to reference is in the modules directory, of course, and we'll just call that module RDS. Now, of course, that module doesn't exist yet. So we need to know what variables to add here. And of course, we'll probably have to add some data sources for things like the VPC and subnets and all that good stuff. OK, so we can go to modules. We'll make a new directory, call it RDS. Inside of that directory, we can make our usual files, main.tf, variables.tf, and outputs.tf. And we can almost get to work. Now, let's check out some examples of this. Now, first and foremost, I'm in our VPC module documentation for our VPC community module. And in here, if we check out, or I'll just search for database subnets, we can see that in addition to private subnets and public subnets that we created, we could also make database subnets. Now, we could just throw a database into the private subnets, and really, that would probably be fine. But if you want, you have this option to create some database subnets that are used specifically for our database. And then you just have to be careful about security groups so that things that are not in, in the database subnets can talk to uh, those subnets. But I think the way we have it set up is that would be fine because we allow all communication through uh, the private network for all private network IP addresses. So we can actually go ahead and see what that would look like in our case if we wanted to go ahead and do that. So to do that, we'll go to our VPC module, head to main, and where we define our subnets for our VPC module here, right? We can go down and say database subnets equals var dot database subnets, which is a new variable we need to make. We'll just copy um, private subnets and we'll name them database subnets. So subnets to create for database traffic. One per AZ is just fine here too. And that is almost it. When we use this module down here in network, we need to then assign that. So database subnets is going to be an additional slice here. Um, so we have six subnets here, right? And we give three to public, three to private. And then we also actually want to give three to our database subnets, which means we also need uh, nine subnets total, not just six. So we're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine subnets there total. And we're going to get the first three for, what was this, public? Yep. The second three for private, and the third three for the database subnets. OK, now um, we don't need outputs for this. We don't need to update the outputs, because we're going to use a data source to get those subnets. What we do want to make sure is that over here in our VPC module, we give it some tags. So we have tags, private subnet tags, public subnet tags. There's also going to be database subnet tags. And the role there is going to be database. OK, so let's go ahead and make this change see if we can do that. We'll back out to the roots here. We're going to do run production network and plan. And I think I have an error here. 6.3 doesn't look right. Let's go back into our network main file where we have this. Let's see what I did wrong here. Um, so 6.2.9, not 6.3. And we'll replan that. And it wants to add seven things. So those seven things are going to be uh, at least three new subnets, database subnets, or actually it's probably going to be something like six subnets. Oh, and the route table associations and all that good stuff. That's why it's up to nine. OK, so let's go ahead and apply that. And once again, remember, I have that setting in our VPC so that we only create one NAT gateway. So we're not creating additional NAT gateways uh, for these private subnets, which if we didn't have that setting, then it would. So we'll say yes to apply these changes, and then we'll have our database subnets created. Those are nice and quick. Let's head over to our account here. Check to subnets. I'm going to say database. And we see that we do, in fact, have the database role ones here created for us. Perfect. OK, back here, we can start using that. So let's just clear all this out, get rid of this. And we have this RDS module. It's just a blank shell here. And we need to start filling it out. 
So what makes up a database? So the first thing we're gonna do is an Aurora MySQL database, and that comes in a cluster. So you can make a cluster, and then you can add instances to that cluster. And in my case, I'm just gonna add one instance. So this is comprised of a few things. We have a AWS database subnet group we're gonna make, and then we have a AWS RDS cluster parameter group. Now the subnet group says what subnets the servers can get created into, the RDS database servers. The cluster parameter groups allows us to set MySQL parameters, such as the NODB uh, log size, the max allowed packets, the character set, all that good stuff that you might set in your client, or I'm sorry, your database server for MySQL. There's an AWS database parameter group, which is uh, similar to the cluster parameter group. We're just gonna use some defaults for that. Then there's the AWS RDS cluster. So this is the actual database here, it's the cluster technically. And then we can add an AWS RDS cluster instance to that. And this is all the parts that goes into creating one RDS Aurora database, which well, of course is a lot of stuff. Okay, so let's go ahead and check out what we have available here. We're done with the AWS VPC docs, and we can see that there is an RDS Aurora community module here available to us, which will make this all much easier. So it's gonna provide uh, the cluster, the cluster group, the subnet group, and we don't care about auto-scaling in our cases. So we have cluster, cluster instance, subnet group. If we head back here, that means we still need to make the parameter groups. So we can go ahead and just start with that. The AWS RDS cluster parameter group is the first thing we'll make. We'll just call this parameter group. And then the other resource here that we need to make manually that's not created by the community module is gonna be AWS DB parameter group. DB parameter group is gonna be its name. And then we can go ahead and pull in our module. So let's see, the documentation for that is gonna be this. We'll just grab that as a shell to start. And this will create the remaining things there. The cluster instance subnet group. Cluster, cluster instance and subnet group all go into this one. Okay, so this isn't a video course on Aurora or RDS in general. So I'm gonna go through this kind of quick about the things we can fill out here. So I'll just copy and paste here. Um, so Cloudcast infrastructure environment parameter group. So PG's parameter group here, Aurora cluster. Uh, the family is gonna be MySQL 5.7. And some parameters I want are the UTF MB4 character sets for server and client and the max load packet. We've pumped that up to the max in case we have large binaries getting saved into the database. Now we have some stuff that is red, right? We need some variables, some infrastructure environment. And I don't want to do VPC ID. We don't need that for anything except for these tags. So I'm going to get rid of that. And so far we only need the variable infrastructure environment. So in variables, we'll go ahead and define that. So that's all set here. Okay. So the next thing we have here is our uh, DB parameter group. And we can go ahead and fill in some stuff from our DB parameter group. So we need a name because the name is used as part of the RDS cluster uh, parameter group name item. Once again, the family is Aurora MySQL 5.7 and we have some tags here. We can get rid of VPC ID. Okay, so we have that two boilerplate things out of the way. Let's go ahead and start filling out stuff in our module. If I head on over here and I'll close this window, we can go up and we'll see that we have the source code here. The source code has examples. And then the example is MySQL Aurora. And we can see the main TF file here for some things we might want to do. So uh, in this case, it's going to create its own VPC using the VPC module with database subnets, just like we did. And then the example of using this module is here. So we can see we need to give it a VPC, some subnets, and some parameters here. We don't necessarily want all of these, but most a lot of these will work for us. Uh, what I'm going to concentrate on right now is the VPC ID and the DB subnet group. And we can combine that with our items here. So name, engine, all this good stuff. Okay, so we have our things here. Well, these are obviously designed for Postgre, which is what the example we just copied and pasted from. We're going to call this cloudcast var.infra.env Aurora MySQL. So the engine here is Aurora MySQL, not Postgre. The engine version is going to be 2.09.2 is the latest as of this video. The instance type is going to be a variable we have not defined yet. So instance size, or I'll just say instance type to keep that consistent. So we can go ahead and define that. So variables, instance type, RDS instance type for a description, type and size. Then let's see what else we want. The VPC ID, the subnets, so the VPC is going to be uh, var.vpcid. 
the subnets is going to be var.subnets. We can throw those into variables as well. So we need the subnets, a list of strings, the VPC ID. Replica count, the cluster count. I'm going to keep that at one. I'm going to hard code that just to keep it a little simpler. This stuff has some defaults. We'll just leave that as it is. And the DB uh, cluster and parameter group are things that we can set. And those are in here. So we called that, let's see, AWS RDS cluster parameter group is down here. Dot parameter group dot name. And this one is the AWS DB parameter group dot DB parameter group dot name as well. So these are going by the name, right? Not their IDs. We can copy and paste some tags here. I'll skip the name tag. That'll get set. We have environment project managed by type Aurora. Okay, that's good. And I think another thing we need here is a username and password. So the username and password. We can just pass these in. Note when you specifying a value here, create random password should be set to false. Okay. So in our case, I'm going to set both. So create random password will be false. Username equals var dot master username. Password equals var dot master password. So if we'll throw that and do variables. Okay, so master username and master password. Those don't have defaults here, obviously. And I think that's okay for this module. We can go ahead and just see how far we get here. So under our data section, we need to start filling out variables. So I'll do this, split that on the side. And the variables are going to be infraemv, which is just var.infraemv. Instance type is going to be some type. We'll figure that out. Subnets is going to be uh, a list here to do data source. BBC ID equals something to do. We get that from a data source. Master username is going to be something. Master password is going to be something. Those are going to be grabbed from variables here. Okay. So instance type is the easiest. I'm just going to do db.t3.medium. You can go ahead and check available RDS database instance sizes for yourself. There's plenty there. And then let's grab ourselves some data sources. And we can copy some of these. So from compute in our main here, let's go ahead and get, uh, well, we'll copy the data source for the private subnets. And um, I'll copy from public and VPC. And we'll pull them into our data here. And we have the VPC. That'll work here. Fine. And this is not public. This is database subnets. The role here is database. So from here, we can get data dot um, subnet IDs dot database subnets dot IDs. And the VPC ID here will be data dot AWS VPC dot ID. Oh, we named it VPC and it'll be a dot ID. And here we can get some new variables. So var db user, var db pass. These are some variables we need to set somewhere. So I think in here we're going to do a new file called variables.tfvars. And here we'll do db user equals root, db pass equals password1234. And I believe we can actually refactor and rename this variables.auto.tfvars, because I believe anything ending in .auto.tfvars gets auto loaded automatically. So we don't even have to define that using a flag. So it should be all set that way. Okay. Let's go ahead and see what we can do here. So we are going to run production data in it. So we have to initialize all of our modules here. We'll see if we get some errors. Fail to query available provider package. And I think what we're seeing here is that our uh, RDS Aurora package actually needs a higher uh, required parameter or required provider for our AWS provider. So let's go ahead and reinit that after getting in 3.30. Okay, that is doing that. Now let's see a plan and see if it yells at us for anything. It doesn't like our TFRs file, I think because these are not strings, or they should be strings in double quotes. And let's see, we did not actually define these variables. So I'm doing all sorts of errors here. So our data source here is using var db user and db pass. TF vars is providing the values for those, but these are not actually defined variables. So let's go ahead and just do that up here. Um, default region, db user, the database user, db pass, the database password, and let's go ahead and retry that. Okay, so seven to add, zero to change, zero to destroy. We can go ahead and see if this will go. Let's go ahead and apply it. 
Okay, so databases take a long time to create typically, so we can just go ahead and over to our RDS section here in the console and see that it is actually being created. We have the cluster here, and the cluster has one instance, which is a writer. It's a read-write. It only has one instance in the cluster, so that's the only database there. And that's still creating. But we can see that we actually are getting a database created. It's going to be in the subnets that our servers can use and talk to in the private subnets created by the VPC module. And we can see that we have segmented all of our various infrastructure areas into three different areas, compute, data, and network. Now, it's a little bit more complicated, but the benefits of it will show up in larger teams or if you have different areas in your organization or your business that needs to control their infrastructure separately. And these can still find information about each other with the use of data sources. So for example, we use the AWS VPC data source a lot so we can get the VPC ID of various stuff all around our uh, various areas that need it, like our compute area and our data area. So this pattern becomes more and more powerful as your teams grow or your business needs grow with various areas of the organization needing to control their AWS infrastructure.